Today we are studying the mandible. It is a U-shaped bone and it forms the skeleton of the lower jaw. Mandible has a body and two ramai. Now let's see the body. It is shaped like a horseshoe and has two surfaces, external and internal. Two borders, upper and lower. Now the surfaces, external surface, it shows symphysis menti. It is a faint ridge on the upper part of the midline indicating the fusion of two halves of mandibles. Mental protuberance. It is a triangular area in the lower part of midline. The upper angle of triangle marks the lower end of symphysis menti. Mental tubercles. The lower angles of triangular mental protuberance are marked by tubercles called the mental tubercles. Mental foramen. It is located below the second premolar and it transmits the mental nerve and vessels. Incisive fossa. It is a shallow fossa below the incisor teeth. Oblique line. It is the continuation of anterior border of ramus on the external surface of the body. It is a faint ridge. It turns downwards and forwards to reach the mental tubercle. Now the internal surface. The mylohyoid line. It is an oblique ridge. It extends downwards and forwards from behind the third molar tooth to the midline near the lower border between the digastric fossae. Mylohyoid muscle is attached to it. Submandibular fossa. It is present below the posterior part of the mylohyoid line. It lodges the submandibular salivary gland, the facial artery, the submandibular lymph nodes. Sublingual fossa. It is an area above the anterior part of the mylohyoid line. It lodges the sublingual salivary gland. Genial tubercles. These are irregular elevations on either side of the midline just above the anterior end of the mylohyoid lines. Upper genial tubercle provide attachment to genioglossus muscle while the lower genial tubercle gives origin to genohyoid muscle. Attachment of the superior constrictor of the pharynx. It originates from the area above the posterior end of the mylohyoid line. Pterygomandibular raphe is attached in continuation with the origin of superior constrictor just behind the third molar tooth. Lingual nerve is related to mandible between the origin of superior constrictor and mylohyoid muscle. Now the borders, upper border, it is also called the alveolar part of the mandible. It is hollowed out by 16 sockets for the roots of permanent teeth. The sockets vary in size and depth. The sockets may be single or subdivided by septa according to the teeth which they contain. Now we, when we see the sockets on one side, we can see the sockets for 3 molar, 2 premolar, 1 canine and 2 incisor. Now the lower border, it is also called as the base of the mandible. Digastric fossa is a depression on each side of the midline. It receives the attachment of anterior belly of digastric. Investing layer of deep cervical fascia is attached to the whole length of the base. Platysma is inserted to the lower border near the outer surface. Ramus of mandible. Now the ramus of mandible has two surfaces, lateral and medial, four borders, upper 
lower anterior and posterior borders it has two processes coronoid process and the condylar process now let's begin with the surfaces lateral surface a small posterior superior area is related to the parotid gland remaining major area provides attachment to masseter muscle medial surface you can see the mandibular foramen and the canal the mandibular foramen is located a little above the center of the medial medial surface it leads into mandibular canal which curves downwards and forwards into the body to open on the external surface at the mental foramen inferior inferior alveolar nerve and vessels enter the mandibular canal through the mandibular foramen lingula it is a tongue shaped projection near the anterior margin of the mandibular foramen spino mandibular ligament is attached to the lingula mylohyoid groove it begins at the lower end of the mandibular foramen behind the lingula and continues downward and forwards to reach the inner surface of the body mylohyoid nerve and vessels occupy the mylohyoid groove medial surface of the ramus between mylohyoid groove and angle of mandible is marked by ridges this area is meant for the attachment of medial pterygoid muscle now the borders upper border it is thin and it forms the mandibular notch mesenteric nerve and vessels cross the mandibular notch lower border it is backward continuation of the base of the mandible it meets with the posterior border of the ramus to form the angle of mandible anterior border it is continuous above with the coronoid process and below with the alveolar border of the body temporalis muscle is inserted to this border and adjoining medial surface posterior border it is continuous above with the condylar process it meets with the lower border to form the angle of mandible and is related to the parotid gland now the process is the coronoid process it is triangular upward projection from the anterior superior part of the ramus its anterior border is continuous with the anterior border of the ramus and posterior border bounds the mandibular notch temporalis muscle gets inserted to the medial surface apex and its margins of the coronoid process now the condylar process it is the upward projection from the posterior superior part of the ramus and it consists of the upper part that is the head and the lower part that is the neck now the head it is side to side expanded part of the condylar process it articulates with the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint the neck it is constricted part below the head it provides attachment to the capsule in its upper part lateral ligament of temporomandibular joint is attached to its lateral part pterygoid fovea is a depression on its anterior aspect lateral pterygoid muscle is inserted in the pterygoid fovea medially the neck is related to the auricotemporal nerve above and the maxillary artery below now going to the ossification of the mandible the mandible is the second bone next to clavicle to ossify in the body its greater part ossifies in membrane and the parts ossifying in the cartilage include the incisive part below the incisor teeth the coronoid and the condylar pores processes and the upper half of the ramus above the level of the mandibular foramen each half of the mandible ossifies from only one center which appears at about 6th week of the intrauterine life in the mesenchymal sheath of meckel's cartilage near the future of mental foramen meckel's cartilage is the skeletal element of the first pharyngeal arch
at birth the mandible consists of two halves connected at the symphysis menti by a fibrous tissue so bony union takes place during the first year of the life now the age changes in the mandible so the in the old age the mandible there is the loss of teeth is a feature of the mandible in the old age alveolar part is absorbed angle of mandible measures about 140 degrees the neck of mandible is bent backwards making the level of coronoid process a little higher than the condylar process the mandibular canal and the mental foramen are close to the upper border of the body whereas in children the uh, mandibular canal and the mental foramen are close to the upper border are close to the lower border of the body now we will see some important observations of the mandible that is the attachments of ligaments in relation to the mandible the capsule of the temporomandibular joint it's around the neck the spinomandibular ligament is attached to the lingula pterygomandibular raphe behind the third molar tooth stylo mandibular ligament at the angle of mandible now the relation of nerves and vessels to the mandible lingual nerve lies below the third molar tooth inferior alveolar nerve and vessels in the mandibular foramen mylohyoid nerve and vessels lodges in the corresponding groove auriculotemporal nerve and the first part of maxillary artery lies on the medial side of the neck and the mesenteric nerve and vessels in the mandibular notch mental nerve emerges through the corresponding foramen the facial artery it loops forward and downwards between the submandibular fossa and the gland then winds around the lower border of the mandibular body at the antero inferior angle of the masseter and then appears tortuously upward and forward in the face now the glands in relation to the mandible parotid gland curls around the posterior border and overlaps the adjoining posterior superior part of the lateral and medial surface of the ramus of mandible superficial part of the submandibular gland is in the submandibular fossa whereas the sublingual gland in the sublingual fossa now the applied aspect related to the mandible the mandible is commonly fractured at the canine socket where it is weak and the next common fracture of the mandible occurs at its angle